After that, we'll be talking about a simple logistic regression. And simple logistic regression means that we have a single predictor in our regression model. Uh, and after that, we will move to multiple logistic regression. And I will conclude my presentation with some uh, few sli summary slides. Let us first look at first uh, example. I called it 1.1. Uh, suppose we have 100 participants. Um, and 100 participants were randomized to one of two treatment groups. So suppose we have some standard treatment and some new treatment against some disease, right? So and in many cases, uh, the outcome is binary. So whether treatment was successful or not. So we have success and failure. Usually in uh, statistics, we denote one as success and zero as failure. So it's a binary zero one outcome. And here we have example of the outcomes of this study. So it's a two by two table. In first two columns, we have uh, 50 subjects separated into two groups, uh, success group and failure group. And similar uh, success and failures we have for a standard treatment group. So as we see in our standard treatment group, for example, here, we had only, only 10 uh, cases, only 10 uh, successful treatments, right? So, uh, which corresponds to 20% success rate, right? 10 over 50, it's 20%. Another one, uh, so in our new treatment group, success rate was higher. So we see 20 successes out of 50, which corresponds to 40%, right? So we can see that there is a difference, 20 versus 40%. But the question is whether this happened just by chance or we can see some, we can say something statistically. Uh, we know that statisticians like to use p-values, you know, to make different uh, clinical decisions, whether one treatment is better than another one, right? But at the same time, uh, probability of success is not the only measure which statisticians use to assess chances of success. Uh, and some of these measures are really useful for logistic regression for understanding what logistic regression is and how it works. This part I just explained. So here I put P new, which means probability of success for new treatment, which is 40%, probability of success for standard treatment, 20%. But also we can calculate odds of success for each of these groups. And odds are denoted by this capital O uh, letter. Odds of success calculated as probability of new treatment, of probability of success for new treatment over one minus probability of success for new treatment. And one minus probability of success is the probability of failure, right? But at the same time, we're always talking about the same treatment group, right? So you remember that probability P nu was uh, 20 over 50, and here we have one minus 20 over 50. You can easily see that uh, this is equal to 20 over 30. So this is number of successful cases over number of failures. Okay? This is what odds are. Number of successes over number of failures. It's not like in previous one. Previously we had 20 over total number of cases uh, in our group. It was 50 cases, right? But right now we have number of successes over number of failures. This is what odds are. And they are associated with uh, probability of success in this form. What is interesting about odds? For example, if probability defined between 0 and 1, or which is the same between 0 and 100%, but odds defined between 0 uh, and infinity. Because we can have uh, like 50 over 0, for example that would be infinity if you would have 50 successes and no failures, right? And on the opposite, another extreme case, if you have zero successes and all 50 failures, so it will be zero over 50, which is equal to 50. That's why these two extreme cases characterize range of possible odds. And statisticians like to work with odds because we don't have this limitation, like probability is bounded by one. It's always between zero and one, right? Uh, but at the same time, when we talk about odds, odds are also bounded by zero, right? So how we can avoid it? 
Statisticians often like to look at so-called logits. Logits, which is just log of success. Natural logarithm of success. Okay? So this is that's why logit nu is equal to log, and you remember we talked about 20 over 30 odds of success. So in similar we can talk about logit. And uh, uh, in, in this presentation we will have several slides which are uh, key slides that you should understand. Uh, and this is one of these key slides. These definitions are extremely important in understanding how uh, logistic regression works. Okay? And that's why it's called logistic, because we're working with logits. Okay? And later you will see it. That's why this is logit, it's log of odds. But you, you should understand that we always have this correspondence. Logit, probability, odds, odds, logit. So it's essentially we're trying to express the same things your chances of success, but in different form, in terms of odds, in terms of probabilities, or in terms of logits. Right? Because if we know logit, we can use anti-log and get back what our odds are. If we know odds, we can calculate what our probabilities are. So this is a straightforward mathematics, just simple transformations. Okay? Let us continue uh, with this example 1.1. If we have two odds in two columns, right? Let me go back one slide. For example, oops, went up here. Uh, so 40% versus 20%, but in terms of odds, we have 66, 0 0.66 versus 0 0.25, right? So we can say that odds of success for new treatment are higher than odds of success for standard treatment, right? That's why if you want to compare those two, we we statisticians often talk about odds ratios. And if you saw some, um, some medical literature, often results are presented in terms of odds ratios. And this is what we can see here. Odds of success in one group over odds of success in another group. So just ratio of two odds. Odds new over odds standard. OK, so we can plug it in. Oh, <laughs> previously I had 0 0.66, now I have 0 0.67. Well, <laughs> so much about mathematicians, right? And uh, odds of uh, success in, treatment, in standard treatment group, we have 0 0.25. And the ratio of these two, 2.67. 2.67 shows how different our odds are, right? Because it's ratio of two odds. And uh, if odds ratio is equal to 1, it means that our odds are the same, OK? If our odds ratio goes up above 1, so it means that uh, odds of success in new treatment group are higher than odds of success in standard treatment group. And on the opposite, if odds, of, if odds ratio goes below 1, it means odds of success in new treatment group lower compared to standard treatment group. Okay? So this is how we can compare two, uh, two different treatments in terms of chances of success. So this is odds ratio. So and it's pretty easily, it can be pretty easily seen that if odds ratio is equal to 1, so automatically you got probabilities of success will be the same, and odds of success will be the same. Um, and I already mentioned before, statisticians like to make decisions on the basis of different p-values, right? And uh, if you want to test whether our odds are the same, so we can formulate our null hypothesis. This is what statistician thinks in terms of uh, null and alternative hypothesis. In this case, our null hypothesis would be H0, that odds ratio is equal to 1, okay? which means probability of success are the same in, in both groups. Alternatively, if probabilities of success are different, in this case, odds ratio is not equal to 1. Right? Uh, we can use different statistical tests to test this hypothesis. And one of these tests is a uh, chi-square test. And for example 1.1, when we had 20 successes in uh, new treatment group versus 10 successes in uh, standard treatment group, our probability, uh, p our p-value for chi-square test was 0.049, which is 4.9%. 
since 4.9% less than 5%, we can claim that there is a difference. There is a statistically significant difference. Talking about this hypothesis, we can say that we should reject our null hypothesis and they claim that our odds are really different from, odds ratio is really different from one, which means that odds of success are statistically different between these groups. And in this case, we can claim, yes, there is a difference. How uh, no difference in uh, success rates would look like? And here we have an example. So what do we see here? 20 successes in new treatment group and 20 successes in a standard treatment group, right? So 40% probability of success for each of these treatments. Of course, probability is the same, odds the same, odds ratio is equal to one. Straightforward, easy. Another example. So here we have a little bit different probabilities of success. So probability of success 10 over 50, 20%. 10 over 50, 20%. Odds of success are the same, 0.25, but odds ratio stays the same. Odds ratio still equal to one. So we still, if you want to perform statistical test, we are testing this null hypothesis. But it can be, the important part is that to have the same probability of success or the same odds of success in each of these groups. And uh, this situation is, always, always call, is often called uh, independence between two variables. This is how we call it in statistics. And two variables are, one is treatment group, it's one variable, and we have uh, standard or new treatment group, it's one variable. And second variable here is just success, yes, no, indicator of success. So these two variables, treatment group and success. And what we saw, test for association, whether we have association between these two variables or not. And this is an example when we don't have association. Chances of success are the same, so it means that there is no association between treatment group and chances of success. So if a patient comes and you try to explain that it doesn't really matter which treatment group this person would choose, right? Chances of success are similar. Now we can talk about uh, simple logistic regression. So we discussed the th these uh, basic definitions of probability of success, odds of success, logits. We, ju we just uh, talked a little bit about logits and we will talk about logits more here. Um, and here we have an example of our simple logistic regression. From example 1.1, you remember we looked uh, at this, let me show you again this table, right? So, and on the basis of this table, we calculated that our odds of success were 0.66 and 0.25, right? And logits were o minus 0.41. And another interesting part about logits, as I mentioned, if we take logarithm from odds, our logit would be defined from minus infinity to infinity, so, to infinity. so it can take any values, including negative values. Odds are always positive, but logits can be negative and can be positive. Okay, so logit of success for new treatment group was minus 0.41, uh, and for standard treatment group was minus 1.39. Let me show you how we can combine these two numbers into a simple logistic regression. And I just repeated from this example 1.1. Log of odds of success is minus 0.41. And for standard group, uh, logits are minus 1.39. So these two different numbers. The difference between these two logits is 0.98. So if you would subtract from minus 0.41, minus 1.39, you would get 0.98, right? So this is just difference between these two numbers, 0 0.98. 
now we can combine those two numbers into a one formula. How we can do it? And this is uh, the simple formula. This formula actually represents logistic regression. Logistic regression equation. What do we have here? Log of odds. But right now, uh, I want to write one formula which automatically can be applied you know, to calculate these two numbers. For example, I put here minus 1.39 plus 0.98. And here in parenthesis, I put treatment is new. And treatment is new, it's like an indicator which is equal to 0 or 1. For example, if our treatment is really new, so in this case, in this parenthesis, we would put 1. If our treatment is not new, if you're talking about old treatment or standard treatment, right? In this case, in this parenthesis, you would put 0. And look what is happening in this case. If we are talking about a new treatment, we would get minus 139 plus 0.98 times 1. What will we get? Minus 139 plus 0.90 is equal to minus 0.41. Okay. So, if we are talking about a new treatment, we should plug in 1 here. And all this equation becomes log of odds, becomes equal to minus 0.41. If we are talking about a standard treatment, so it means that this uh, statement in parenthesis is not true, which is equal to 0. And we have minus 139 plus 0.98 times 0, which is equal to minus 1.39. This is first step. This is very, very important step. This is the key step in understanding simple logistic regression. This is how we go from uh, the simple log of odds of success into this formula. This is what logistic regression is. In our logistic regression, in this one, in this regression, we have only one predictor, treatment group. And then patient comes and chooses one of these two treatments, right? So what you can do? You can just plug in this treatment assignment, 0 or 1, here. And you can calculate logs of success for this particular person. Okay. So this is how we just combine those two numbers. And this is what we got. This is an example of simple logistic regression. And this is a uh, second key slide uh, in my presentation. First key slide was uh, the difference between probabilities, odds, and logits, right? But right now, when we know what logits are, we try to combine two logits from two different groups into one formula. And this is the formula. I just explained this slide, actually. <laughs> but let me repeat myself. Treatment is new. It's equal to either 0 or 1. In this logistic regression, I mentioned minus 139 and 0.98 uh, are, called, so, uh, are called regression coefficients. And if you use some statistical software to run simple logistic regression, you usually have regression coefficients. And these are one, minus 139 and 0.98 are you regression coefficients. Okay. Minus uh, 139, so first regression coefficient, which is a constant. Sometimes it's called constant in a uh, in regression model. But sometimes it's called intercept, model intercept. So this is what our intercept is. Second one, 0.98, is so-called treatment effect. Because remember, we have two treatments, standard and new treatment, right? How we can differentiate these two treatments? We can differentiate it using this uh, regression coefficient. And uh, this regression coefficient, 0.98 treatment effect, is just difference between logits of success. Difference between logits of success. One logit of success was minus 139. Another one, minus 0.41. Difference between logits of success. So our treatment effect can be expressed in different ways. It can be odds ratio, which you remember was equal to 2.67. It was ratio of two odds, right? It can be just difference between two probabilities. 
So it will be 40% minus 20%, difference is 20%, right? But the problem with probabilities, if you try to express, uh, if you try to express the difference between uh, two treatments in terms of probabilities, then probability of success, 21% versus one, difference is 20, right? And 20 versus 40, difference is also 20. But meaning is different. That's why uh, people like to use uh, odds ratios and logits to express uh, treatment effects. If probabilities are the same, so difference between probabilities is equal to zero, ratio of two probabilities is equal to one, odds ratio is equal to one, difference between logits is equal to zero. If there is no difference in success, in treatment success, in this case, difference between logits is equal to zero. And difference between logits is this one. In our case, is equal to 0.98, which is different from zero, right? And when we run logistic, logistic regression, uh, in addition to these regre regression coefficients, we also have p-values. P-values show whether each of these coefficients is different from zero or not. And this is how we can test whether this particular factor is influential for chances of success or not. Okay. Well, <coughs> again, about the same, about the same simple regression, the same example, the same formula. And uh, as I said, if we are talking about standard treatment, plug in zero, got minus 39. But what is interesting, when we plug in zero here, right? So we calculated our logit. We know what logit is minus 0.39. But you remember, our logit is related to odds and related to probabilities. So we can go backward from logit and we can recalculate what our odds are and what probability of success is for this particular treatment. And this is what we can do here. If we know logit, we can calculate odds, which is just anti-log for minus 139, which is equal to 0.25. And if you can go back and calculate probability of success, we can do it and I will later show you the formula on, my, on one of my slides. So it's 20%. And similar stuff, if we're talking about a new treatment, so we, instead of uh, zero, we plug in one here and we would calculate logits of success minus 0.41. And after that, we take anti-log and we uh, got our odds of success in new treatment group which is 0.67, right? And probability of success is equal to 40%. So you see how we went from our two by two table, from probabilities, odds, uh, logits, we went to logistic regression, and now I, show, I showed how we can go backward, right? From simple logistic regression, how we can calculate our odds of success and probabilities of success. Yeah, so, and here I just, uh, okay, and another interesting moment in a simple logistic regression. If we apply anti-log to 0.98, you remember it was our uh, regression coefficient, we will get odds ratio. So e to the power of 0.98 is equal to 2.67. You just ratio of two odds. And this is how people usually explain logistic regression in uh, their scientific medical literature. So they explain treatment effects, they compare different treatments and explain uh, how one treatment is better than another one in terms of odds ratios. So you can take just regression coefficient from whatever statistical software you use, exponentiate it, and you would get odds ratio. So, and uh, as I mentioned before, uh, chi-square test was used for two by two table. Uh, when you run logistic regression, simple logistic regression, you can get a little bit different p-value because uh, a little bit different method is used by default by logistic regression for calculating these p-values. But they're usually pretty close. And chi-square test and simple logistic regression. Okay. I'm just not trying to focus on this uh, 
so-called p-values. And on statistical tests, I just want to focus on interpretation of results. When you run logistic regression, you got some output, some statistical after, uh, from statistical software. I need you need to be able to interpret it. Okay. So and this is the interpretation. Exponentiate your regression coefficients, and you would get your odds ratios. So at first example, what we looked at, uh, we looked at just two treatments, right? And uh, initially we talked about association between treatment and chances of success, right? But when we talk about regression models, we usually assume that the reason uh, that we use our treatments in order to predict chances of success, right? And this is what usually happens if a patient comes to you, so and this patient chooses one or another treatment, right? So in this case, you can calculate chances of success, right? And this, but suppose uh, we use a little bit different predictor, not a binary predictor like treatment group, uh, new versus standard, but age, okay? Because when patient comes, patient not necessarily can choose one of these two treatments. Maybe there is only one treatment, right, which exists. But you know this patient's age, right? And also there is a success failure depending uh, on person age, on person's age, right? And in this case, we can also talk about a simple logistic regression. But in this case, we have so-called continuous predictor. Because in previous model, we had a categorical predictor, especially it's simple case, binary one, zero, one predictor. But age is a continuous variable, right? So, and we will consider a little bit different example. Uh, coronary heart disease. And... Uh, for this heart disease, so uh, right now our outcome would be not just success failure, like it was on previous example, but it will be disease, no disease, right? This will be our outcome. And uh, there are different predictors for that. And uh, among predictors, we can see gender, age, smoking, high blood pressure, cholesterol, obesity, and you see age. And in this example, I will specifically focus on age because it's a continuous predictor and it's different from uh, what we saw on previous example. This is the data set. What we see, we see pairs of observations. First one, age in years. And second one, CD, coronary heart disease. And zero corresponds to uh, no disease cases, and one corresponds to disease. So what we can see from this picture, from our data, uh, of course, when age goes up, our chances of coronary heart disease are going up, right? And this is what we can see. The older the person is, the more ones we see, right? So the more likely this person would have CHD. And for example, for older person above 55, you see we have only one person, 60 years of age, who doesn't have CHD, right? But how we can express this association between binary, uh, between binary variable, CHD, no CHD, and age? We will discuss it later. Because age is a continuous predictor, as I mentioned. Uh, so what we can do when we have these two groups, CHD and no CHD group? Well, we can calculate mean age for each of these two groups, right? So mean age in no CHD group would be equal to 38.6. If you look at CHD group, mean age is equal to 58.7. Two groups how we can compare means between two groups. T-test. So we can use, use T-test. And if you apply T-test, you, you would see that p-value is less than 0 0.001, which says, yes, our groups are different. Okay. But at the same time, it's really difficult to assess uh, how predictive our age, how age contributes to chances of CHD. Okay. Because it's kind of we going backward. If we know whether this person has CHD or not, we can, we can uh, predict what this person's age would be, right? But how we can go backward? How we can go from age to chances of CHD? And look at this uh, picture here. So this is so-called scatter plot. For, uh, for our data, you remember we had just two variables, CHD, 0, 1, and age. So, and uh, CHD is equal to 0 to 1, 0 or 1, yes, no, no, yes. 
and h. So we can just plot all of these pairs of observations on this picture, this so-called dot plot. How we can describe association? If, if you went to previous CME lectures, statistical lectures, probably you went through a uh, logistic regression lecture, and you saw that in many cases we can describe association between two variables using linear association. This is what linear association is. But it's, it's not really useful, right, for describing association between a continuous variable, h, and a binary variable. So in this case, statisticians use uh, the following trick. Since association cannot be well described uh, by, a, by a straight line between continuous and categorical and binary predictor, but at the same time, what we know is that we assume that behind each case there was some probability, some chances of CHD. Okay? So even, for example, for this person, we see whether this person has CHD or doesn't or do not have CHD. We assume that there is some probability that this person could have CHD. And for younger people, this probability of CHD is smaller, right? For, higher, for older people, this probability of CHD is higher. And what we want to do right now, we want to look at association between probability of CHD and uh, H. The problem is this probability of CHD is not observed. We observed already some outcome, whether it happened or not, right? CHD. How we can uh, assess association between probability and H? One way we can uh, try to split our H into different groups, and we can calculate probability of CHD for each H group. And let's look what will happen in this case. So from our raw data, where we had exact ages and exact 0, 1 outcome, now we have groups. You see how we combined 20 to 29? We had only five, pe five people in this group, right? But there, there were no CHD cases. So it's why probability of CHD for this 20 to 29 group is equal to 0%. We can go ahead, 30 to 39, we had only six persons in this group, only one case. But probability, you see, went to 17%. This is actually estimate of this probability because we usually don't know this probability, right? But still, we are not, we are not limited to just zeros and ones right now, right? So we have something between 0 and 1. We have these probabilities assessed for each of these groups. That's why we have this probability going. You see how it's going up. 0, 17, 29, 59, 80. This group. <laughs> and last group, uh, 80 to 89. Only one person have a CHD. Can we plot it? Yeah, we can. So we can, what we can see on this picture? We can see that association. But you see, right now, I don't have just CHD, just yes, no outcome. But right now, I try to plot here probability of CHD. And this is the difference. I try to plot probability of CHD. So in this case, we have age groups, 0, 1, 2, 3, and probability of CHD. And this is our association. This is our association. OK? So this is what we see. How, how useful can be for us, right? Because we actually deviated a little bit from our initial problem when H was uh, continuous. But right now, here, H is grouped, right? This is how it's useful. Because when we saw that there is this kind of association between H and probability of CHD, now we can use so-called logistic curve in order to describe this association. Okay? So we impose this functional relationship between probability of CHD and our H. And you see, here we have H, and here we have our probability of CHD. And this is a better way to describe association. Interpretation of parameters. If I use some statistical software uh, to run, to fit simple logistic regression, I need to specify what my binary outcome variable would be and what my predictor is. 
And in this case, uh, you remember I, I showed you this example where we had CHD outcome 0 once and H as a predictor, right? So, and this is what I see when I run my statistical software. When I run my statistical software, I got regression coefficients by analogy with what we saw, for example, 1.1. And regression coefficients are minus, uh, minus 6.58 and 0 0.13. And here we have p-values. P-values. And these p-values say that these regression coefficients are different from zero. So this p-value says that this is significantly different from zero, and this p-value says that this is significantly different from zero. Now we can take these two regression coefficients, and we can generate similar, simple logistic regression equation, this one. Okay. You see, structure is almost identical to what we saw previously, right? What the difference is? The difference is, right now we're talking about logit of CHD, but previously we talked about logits of treatment success. Uh, we also have our intercept in our model, and we also have, but right now it's not a treatment effect, because uh, instead of uh, binary indicator of treatment zero and one, I have age. This is age effect. And specifically, this uh, 0.13 shows how this number goes up, and this is actually uh, logit if h is equal to zero. <laughs> so for newborns, what would be chances of CHD for newborns? We can we can put zero here, right? So in this case, logit of CHD would be equal to minus 6.58. If this person is one years old. So in this case, logit of CHD would be minus 6.5 plus 0.13, and so on and so forth. So this shows how logit of CHD goes up with every year we leave, right? And here I describe it in a little bit more details. Because in that previous formula, we can plug in any ages, right? Even 250 even though it's not realistic, but why not? So if I plug in 30, logit, logit of success would be minus uh, 256. And you remember how on previous slide uh, we saw associations between logits, odds, and probabilities. Similar stuff is here. So from logit, we can calculate odds of CHD, and we can calculate probability of CHD. And uh, uh, this is how we go from odds Oh, from logits to odds, and this is how we go from odds to probability. You remember last time I, I, I said that I, I will show a formula uh, later how uh, odds of success associate with chances, with probability of success. This is a formula. So, and we can calculate our logit of CHD for any ages. So we, we can plug in any ages, and we can calculate what our chances of CHD for each of these ages. So this is what we can predict using simple logistic regression. If we know a person's age, we can calculate how likely this person have CHD. Interpretation of parameters. I already touched it a little bit when I talked about newborns and one-year-old people. So, and uh, another uh, interesting aspect of that, uh, if we use antilog to our regression coefficient, to our age effect. So we will get 1.14, which shows how our odds go up. So at every year, odds of CHD go up by 14%. Because we are not necessarily uh, can talk about logits of CHD, we can talk about odds of CHD. And this is what we have. Odds of CHD go up by 14% with every year. Uh, yeah, so if H is 40, we can calculate odds of CHD, which is equal to 0.26. If H is 41, so we can take this previously calculated odds, multiply it on our odds ratio, which is 1.14, and we will get odds of CHD for H if your H is 41. 
So from 0.26, we go up to 0.29.29.6. And similarly, we can plug in 60 into our formula. And we can calculate odds of CHD 3.56. If we add one year, odds go up by 14% from 3.56 to 4.06. Okay. And similarly, if we go up, uh, of course, we are not uh, becoming younger from year to year. But theoretically, if uh, in our formula we calculated odds of CHD for 60 years old is 3.66, then we can calculate what odds of CHD would be for 59 year old if we divide by odds ratio. So here we were multiplying by 1.14, but here we can, we can divide by 1.14. So it's the same, simple stuff. Okay. What assumptions? Uh, Assumptions about logistic regression. So we should have independent observations because sometimes our observations are not independent. Uh, and I can often see it. For example, if I'm talking about so-called matched case control studies, then for every person who have uh, some disease, we will choose another person of similar age, right, who doesn't have a disease. So this so-called matching on age. Uh, but in this case, you impose dependence between these two people, right? So in this case, interpretation of logistic regression uh, would be different. But I, I'm, not, I'm not talking about this uh, in this uh, lecture. We're just talking about logistic regression. And in logistic regression, we usually assume that we have independent observations. Um, okay, and uh, we need to have a linear relationship between logit of CHD and age. A few slides ago, here, I showed this curve, right? This curve shows that we have logistic, log log that logistic curve describes association between probability and age, right? But interesting part is that if instead of probability, we would start talking about logits, association between logits and age would be linear. Okay, so instead of this logistic curve, we would see straight line. A linear association between logit of CHD and H. This is the assumption we have. Sometimes, no, not sometimes, very often this assumption is violated. Uh, what should we do if uh, our assumption is violated? One possibility, we can split H into groups. There are different ways how you can split into groups, and we saw uh, that you can consider decades, right, or something else. But usually we would like to see if we, if we partition H into groups, we would like to see uh, at least five events in each of these groups, okay? And at least five non-event cases as well. So this partitioning, as I suggested here, it was just convenient for me. But then I do statistical analysis for somebody. I usually never do it in this way. Because our logistic regression actually depends on, uh, on these ratios. For example, here we have only one case. And here we have, in this group, we have only two uh, known cases. So it's not a good partitioning, I would say. But for illustrative purposes, we will use it. So if I s sliced my H into three groups, as I just showed to you. So what we will get, we will get two categorical variables, uh, CHD or no CHD, and we have age groups, uh, 20 to 39, 40 to 53, and uh, 54 to, say, 90. Okay. So, and we can represent all our observations, and we have 32 observations in our data set using this two-weight table. So what we can say about this two-way table, previous one? Uh, what we can say about odds of CHD in this case, in, or for this group, for this age group? Odds of CHD would be 1 over 10, right? For second group, 40 to 53, odds of CHD 4 over 6. And for last age group, it, uh, odds of CHD would be 9 over 2. And this is what we see here, 1 over 10, 4 over 6, 2 over 2. 
So these are odds of CHD for each of these age groups. Next step. If you know odds, we can apply logarithm, right, to these odds, and we can calculate our logits. And here we have logits of CHD for one group, for another group, and for third group. So we just apply log to each of these numbers. But what is interesting here, if on our, in our first example, 1.1, we talked about two groups, right? Treatment, standard treatment, and new treatment groups. Now we're talking about three groups, three age groups. And instead of just two odds, we're talking about three odds, separate odds for each of our groups. We have three odds, right? We want to compare our age groups, right? We want to compare odds of CHD between, the, uh, between these three groups. How we can do it? We can look at odds ratios again. But usually what we do, we usually choose one of these groups, and we call it reference group or baseline group. And we compare odds of CHD from other group versus this reference group. For example, here, odds ratio. So if you want to compare odds, we can look at odds ratios. For example, odds ratio of 6.7, it would be odds of success uh, for group 40 to 53 over odds of success, success, of odds of CHD for, uh, for our baseline group, for our reference group. And in this case, it's uh, group 20 to 39. So if you look at previous slide, this is our baseline group. Odds is 1 over 10. It's 0.1. And here our odds is 4 over 6. It's 2 over 3. 10 over 1 over uh, 4 over 6. And this is what we will get. This is our odds ratio. So this is just ratio of two odds. 10 over 1, you see, 10 in numerator, 1 is in denominator. But we should divide it by 6 over 4. So it's why 6 over 4 should stay in denominator. That's why 4 goes up into numerator. So it's pretty simple uh, arithmetics. But this is how we can calculate odds ratios. So what we can say? We can say that odds of CHD are 6.7 times higher if person between 40 to 53 years old comparing to a person from 20 to 39 years old group. If we, can, if we would like to compare uh, the group, the odds of CHD of group 54 to 90 versus 20 to 39, we can also just consider odds ratio. But it will be a little bit different odds ratios, right? So this odds ratio compares second group versus first, and this one compares third versus first group. And I mentioned that uh, when we do categorization, we should be careful in terms of how many cases and how many non-cases we have. We would like to see at least five. Let me move slowly into so-called uh, multiple logistic regression. In multiple logistic regression, we have more than one predictor. Okay. And it's really, really useful, our previous example, because in our previous example, we can show how two predictors we can use how, how we can use two predictors in our model. And this is first top first step toward multiple logistic regression. Three groups, and let us define two variables, H1 and H2. It, these are just binary indicators of group membership. So if person's age somewhere between 39 to 53, in this case we will call uh, this variable H1 will be equal to 1, otherwise 0. And this variable H2 is equal to 1 if person is older than 53 years of age. Otherwise, it's zero. So we have two binary variables. And this age, less than uh, 39, you remember, it was our uh, baseline group, reference group. If I run statistical software, for example, SAS, I get this output. And again, I have regression coefficients. What's the difference right now? Now we have two predictors. H1 and H2, right? You remember in our previous models when we talked about simple logistic regressions, we had only single predictor, whether it was age, continuous variable, 
or whether it was uh, just group membership in our first example, example 1.1. Now we have two predictors. So what we can say? We can say, if you look at these p-values, we can say that this value, 1.89, is not significantly different from 0. So it means that odds of CHD are not significantly different between our baseline group, which is less than 39 years of age, and uh, what was our second group, uh, 40 to 53, right? So if you look at this p-value, this one, 12%, we can say that there is no, we fail to show that there is a difference. Usually when we have large, large sample size, almost all these, these p-values are pretty small and we can see very, very small differences. We can detect very small differences. But for this sample size, we cannot see it. But what, what we can say that this value uh, for H, H2 is significantly different from, from our baseline group because this p-value is pretty small, less than 5%. So that's why if your age above 54, so it means that you odds of CHD are uh, higher, significantly higher, compared to those who are younger than 39 years of age. If you take these three regression coefficients, we can combine them together and get this equation, logistic regression equation. So what we can do, uh, again, we can use the if person comes and you know this person's age, right? So we can calculate uh, whether this person age between 39 and 53 and whether this person age is above 53. So we can plug in 0 or 1 here or 0 or 1 here. So what happens if a uh, person 30 years old shows up? It means that this statement is not true, right? Which is equal to 0. And this statement is not true. That and uh, this is also equal to zero. So that's why logit of CHD for 30 years person, for 30 years old person would be minus 2.3. If this person is say 40 years old, so in this case, this term is equal to one, this term is equal to zero. And logit of CHD would be minus 2.3 plus 1.89, because this is equal to one, all right? I think it should be straightforward. And here I just uh, calculated logits of CHD for each of these age, age groups. So if you know age group, we can calculate logit, and we can calculate odds, and we can calculate probability of CHD. Okay? So the difference comparing to our uh, continuous age is that right now we use age groups and we have two predictors not just single predictor but at the same time we are not uh, restricted to having linear association between age and logit because right now we're talking about groups what are other possible improvements we just saw uh, how we can use two predictors in a multiple logistic regression model. But at the same time, we can include many other predictors in our model. And we will get similar output, similar interpretation. Uh, an interesting part is that, in this case, interpretation of how uh, regression coefficients will be slightly different. In this case, uh, if you exponentiate if you take anti-log for your regression coefficient, we will, be, we will be talking about adjusted odds ratios, okay? Not about crude odds ratios, uh, like we talked before. For example, in simple logistic regression, we would just, we would just get so-called crude odds ratio. But if you're talking about multiple logistic regression, for example, suppose in addition to age, we include gender, right? So in this case, interpretation would be different. Interpretation would be adjusted for gender. And I will show you an example. Okay, example three. Goal, to identify risk factors associated with low birth weight. Data set, in our data set we have 189 women and 59 cases with low birth weights for babies and 130 normal 
weights. What are possible factors associated with low birth weight? Uh, age, uh, subject's weight, last weight, race, and we had uh, uh, this race variable had three groups, one, two, and three. And I, I didn't know what these race categories are from this data set, so we, because we were just enumerated. Maybe it's like white, black, and other, or something, I don't know. Uh, so, and last one is the number of physician visits. So, age is a continuous variable. Uh, subject weight is a continuous. This is a categorical. That's why we generated two variables by analogy with age, two, age one and age two. Which you, uh, which you saw on previous slides, and uh, number of physician visits. When I run my logistic regression model, this is what I get. Regression coefficients. And now I have, again, intercept. Intercept is not significantly different from zero. Age. There is no significant age effect on low birth weight. This is, this is how I interpret these results. Uh, Last weight, that was a significant predictor. And you see, this p-value is 2.9%, uh, which is less than 5%. Race 2 was a significant predictor. Race 3 was not. And uh, frequency of visits, right? What it was, I don't remember. Number of physician visits. Number of physician visits, uh, visits is not significant predictor. So I just highlighted those two. Because if these two are not significant predictors, then there is no reason to include these two predictors in my model. I can just leave them out. If I exclude those, what I will get? I will get this model. I will have just LTV, race 2, and race 3. And you see, I did not exclude race 3 variable from my model. Because I use the same definition of race as a variable. Because my race variable had three categories, and I would like always to keep this race variable in my model or exclude it, right? So, and that's why one of these uh, was significant, another one was not, but I still would like to keep it in my model. So, what will happen with my regression equation? This is what I would get in this case. So, here I calculate uh, logit of lower birth weight, intercept minus this parameter plus this value, plus this value. And here I have LTV, L LWT, <laughs> LWT, race 2, and race 3 as a binary predictors. As I mentioned before, interpretation of regression coefficients uh, will be not just odds ratios, but adjusted odds ratios. And this is what I have here. For example, if you look at previous slide, you remember LWT regression coefficient was minus 0.01. If I ex oops, and if I exponentiate this value, I would get 0.98. And in this case, we would talk uh, about so-called adjusted odds ratios, because in my logistic regression, in addition to LWT, I also have race variable. That's why it will be adjusted for race odds ratio. This is the interpretation. Um, so what we can say, in this case we can say that odds of low birth weight decreases by 2% because you remember it's uh, odds ratio is equal to 0.98, right? Uh, with, pound, with one pound increase in uh, last weight. This is the interpretation for this value, 0.98. What are objectives for uh, multiple logistic regression? Here I just listed three usual objectives people use. Here we have uh, find significant predictors. And this is what we saw in our last example. To build a predictive model for logits of CHD or logits of success. And to control for effect of other significant predictors. That's why we say adjusted for. Another. Uh, another objective is a prediction. This is what I mentioned, actually. Uh, but from prediction, we can go into classification. Because, for example, if uh, we calculate logits of CHD for every person, right, 
So in this case, we can make a decision whether this person should go for further diagnostics or not, right? For example, if person's chances or probability of CHD above, say, uh, 90%, in this case, maybe we should schedule another visit, right? So in this case, you can make a decision whether this person should go for further observation or not, further uh, diagnostics. Assumptions for logistic regression, as I mentioned, observation should be independent. Linear relationship between log of odds and continuous covariates. That's why you remember I talked about this H as a continuous variable. We should have linear association between logits of CHD and H. And constant odds ratio across values of continuous predictors. If not, categorize them. This is what we did for H. You remember we sliced it into three pieces. Summary. Logistic regression uh, deals with binary outcomes. Logistic regression allows to have several predictors in model. It can be categorical, continuous predictors, ordinal predictors. And uh, logistic regression provides estimates for adjusted odds ratios. Here I have uh, several references. You have these references in your handouts. Resources, uh, CTSI, and Biostatistics Consulting Services. And here let me mention uh, that we have uh, free drop-in consulting at four different places. You have it in your uh, handouts. And if you're affiliated somehow with MC MCW, so you're eligible for some uh, free consulting hours. And this is it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> if you have any questions, you can ask. Good. Um, in example three, uh, where you had race as a categorical variable, mm -hmm. and it 